Welcome everyone to the Sports Continuum podcast. I'm Ashish Das, a sports management professional and your host for this podcast. Through this platform, I'll strive to bring to you interesting and exciting sports content from both the technical and business side of sports. Today we are going to discuss the developmental pathway for both budding and veteran table tennis athletes in India. To discuss more on this, we have a very special guest, Mrs. Munmun Mukherjee. Mrs. Munmun is an international table tennis player, an international coach, and the only Indian woman to be certified with ITTF Level 3 coaching certification. Moreover, she is the founder and CEO of P3 Sports Management, which is a sports academy and an events firm. So without further ado, let's jump right into the podcast. Uh, I ha- have personally known you and uh, it's it's a privilege to have you on this show today. Thank you, Ashish. First of all, uh, a big congratulation to you and your team to uh, take this uh, great initiative forward. Uh, yes, uh, I'm honored and privileged to be part of this initiative with you and with your team. Thank you so much for inviting me today. Thank you, ma'am. And start off with your native city, w- yeah. where it was, and what kind of infrastructure was available to you when you started out your career from that city? That would be great for our audience. Yeah, yeah. So I am basically from a place. It's a small uh, town called Chandanagar. Uh, this is a uh, uh, close to Calcutta, Howrah. Uh, by train, it's one hour distance, and it's a very pretty city, pretty town. It's ruled by uh, French. You know, we got the in- independence 1947 India, but we got the independence our from Chandanagar from French in 1954. Oh. So that is the information yeah so yeah. we were we were ruled by the french government till 1954 it's a very pretty city yes i uh, i have born and brought up there it's it's a non metro of course it's a small town uh, so uh, i have started playing uh, table tennis when i was 9 years old so back then uh, we used to have only two three clubs in chennai so i still remember the name of those clubs is shobuje rovigan boys sporting club and jupiter sporting club uh, so uh, yeah infrastructure was a big issue during uh, that time so each, uh, each club only used to have one tt table and you know which is not enough for running any kind of a tt and academy so of course we used to have difficulties of getting our chances while uh, the training session but there there were few advantages also ashish i have to mention that because since we are we are from a small city so the advantage was yes definitely infrastructure was a, a setback for us but yeah uh, advantage was we we was to a big uh, field you know a uh, big field so uh, yeah. with our uh, training uh, on the t- uh, table we used to have lots of physical activities when we w- we were waiting for our turn to come so we used to go to the field the field were almost adjoining to the clubs mm-hmm. so uh, we used to do lot of physical physical training so and i believe that strongly impacted my game uh, we were like we used to run 10 km we used to do lot of uh, reflex training and all such thing the various kind of sports we used to play in fact we used to play some football also while we used to wait for our turn so that way we have to adjust our uh, you know yeah now uh, the timing which we have to uh, wait and the, uh, and also the coaches uh, yeah that is this advantage was coaches used to come from different town uh, so uh, that's a uh, minus point because we were not having the uh, professional coaches uh, that time in chennai so i had to travel to kolkata for my higher training and all Uh, but there is big advantage in uh, metro cities and non metro cities athlete i believe the hunger which is mo- which were more in us and uh, we just uh, we we just have, like morning we decide okay let's play tt for 2 hours so we used to ride our bicycle and we used to call our friends and we we can come and access the club premises yeah any moment any time which is a big disadvantage in metro cities which yeah. i so we had a timings you know so, uh, we had timings we, you have to come 4 o'clock 5 o'clock and you will get one hour coaching session maximum 2 hours but in our days that was so beautiful any moment any during any time of the day we used to go to the club and we used to play so, so that is a big advantage for us it is 
yes De- definitely the advantage of playing any time and practicing your game and at yeah. the same time having the field to yourself uh, working on the sports as you mentioned football there would be a yes. improvement yes. in your game in of table tennis as well reflex agility movement everything everything so we are very very fit and maybe that's impacted our game a lot yes now once that advantage is there you may be looking at what's the next step ahead you said you started playing at the age of 9 and yes. having a better opportunity in terms of more playing time and uh, with a disadvantage of the coaches so what was your what was your next step that you planned how did you plan to go ahead and creating it a professional career for yourself yeah so but to be very honest ashish during that time we were not aware of any such uh, thing like what we what, what would be our career no clear visibility mm-hmm. that what would be our career path and what kind of a uh, uh, equipment we should use to better uh, of our game nothing we used to just uh, play play practice play my advantage was my dad used to be uh, uh, attached to the tennis association you know in chandanagar tennis so he used to know all the information where it would be the tournament where should i when should i go there and participate who is the better coach all this knowledge because my parents were played tt at level so that advantage i definitely i got but uh, we but from my side i i i just focused on my game nothing else and i just uh, i knew ki if i play state level or national level then i will get a very good government job and we can of course travel india <laughs> that was the mindset yeah. which is wrong. to be very honest and because we didn't have that kind of exposure back then yes now it's a different game altogether we cannot just think okay we will play a national level a state level and we'll have a job and we'll travel no that's a wrong concept but to be very honest we we, we were not exposed to the world during that mm-hmm. time yeah so we just focused on our game and that is also a, that part is also good i believe but with that if we back then we were new ki okay this is the career but this kind of a rubber this kind of a, a tactical training we need to do now i know lots about tactical training ashish mm-hmm. but back then in my childhood i was not aware of what is actually tactical training got it got it now, uh, given also like back then and now and if i compare again the non metro city still there is a lack of information that persists yes. and uh, many wouldn't won't be coming from a privileged background uh, that uh, they would have also knowledge of the table tennis structure mm-hmm. so if you can if you can uh, guide the audience on what is a potential career pathway for a budding table tennis athlete that would be great yeah yeah so uh, mainly in india so uh, most of the table tennis players are employed by psus and government institutions and the way sports is encouraged in our country is through sports quota jobs so if you play at the state level you will be getting a clerical job and at the national level you will get a officer's job mm-hmm. so it's actually all depend on what you are looking for if you compare uh, it to iims or isb or iits then of course there is no comparison but if you are comparing with an engineering college an mba graduate then the living is pretty decent but when you go to the academic side everybody gets a guarantee mm. if you study this you get this much of salary which is more or less guaranteed you know but in sports there is no guarantee so that is a small setback in sports there is no guarantee that you will be good and you will be paid so much and there is no slab mm-hmm. that is the reason most of the parents are a little skeptical about sports but on the other side yes if you perform for the country then of course there is a pretty decent living mm-hmm. then they might get some sponsorship for their tournaments and training prize money from the tournament is still i will not say still not up to the mark for india uh, in india top cricket players not yet been introduced with any brand ambassador you know in table tennis in india yeah. Yeah. so there are still few areas which we can certainly look for some development in the recent future but uh, according to me yes uh, uh, it's lots of uh, opportunities mm-hmm. uh, in sports of table tennis you know 
yeah beside the uh, job if you are not succeed that i think will come in this discussion later if you are not succeed as, as a player what what yeah. the other opportunity yeah. you can Course. Of course, the the sports scenario is improving in India, and it's uh, I I'm very optimistic about table tennis. Well. Definitely, we'll definitely come back to it. We'll just jump between a few of the sections and just coming to your uh, pathway into the table tennis circuit. Uh, who were some of your role models that you looked uh, looked uh, up to when you started playing table tennis? Yeah, see, when I started playing table tennis, my uh, uh the uh, immediate role model was uh, um, chaitali das because he know, many people must have not know about her but she wa- was nas- national champion junior national champion and sub junior national champion and she she was a uh, absolutely rock star and she belonged to chandanagar also so i used to play with her so she was my uh, yes my role model to start starting days later on my role model um, is of course niyoti roy and indu puri got it so a, a local athlete is the key ingredient most of the times is the driving yes. factor yes yes yes, yes. and uh, when you started like thinking ahead of just practicing and did you have a number of hours that you wanted to train particularly and just on the game and also on let's say developing your fitness side how many hours did you devote yeah. to both of these yeah so uh, basically we used to play in the morning time 6 o'clock to 8 o'clock then we used to go to the school and then once we are back from the school immediately after our, our lunch and we used to take one hour rest then 4 o'clock to 8 8:30 we used to be in the club and then afterwards when we come back then study time so that is that was our schedule but yes i have mentioned that this 2 hours and 5 hours 7 hours we are not actively participating of course we had to wait we have to uh, do physical activity so i will say like on table we used to train 2 and a half to 3 hours and physical activity 1 hour yes right so on a daily basis 3 hours so 2 hours on tt and 1 hour off the court okay. Yes. Yes. And uh, around the age of let's say the ten to fifteen, when you are actually seeing improvement in your game and thing uh, thinking about ET as the mainstay career, mm-hmm. what kind of training strategy did you employ? And uh, uh, on your game style, particularly technical, what kind of strategy did you feel that was favoring you? The advantage that you had, and. what did the coach also come about because there could be some instance where you feel that your game is something else and your coach feels that you can improve on something else to be a better table tennis player mm-hmm. so mainly you know ashish table tennis is a very very intelligent game and very fast game so it's not only uh, you have to use lo- uh, your mind a lot so uh, i was uh, i was very active during that time i i used to play from my mind as well so i will not say he uh, yes I, i i used to give 100% to my uh, improve of my mind also so i always used to focus first my opponent weakness you know what is the opponent so before any match i used to see if the see first round second round third see if i know i am meeting someone in the quarter final but i make sure i see how she is playing her uh, with the other opponent and i i used to analyze uh, her game you know so first i used to chalk down the what is the op- opponent's weakness and from my side i i try to play always consistently and not to make some unforced error you know yeah. so tt yeah. is a game you have you need lot of consistent mm-hmm. you know you have to keep all the ball on the table in fact so then you will get a point so mm-hmm. you cannot mm, uh, make any unforced error so that that i always while practicing also i never used to play any rash and any erratic yeah. shot you know yeah. so that is the main thing i used to play like 100 top spin i have to do at a stretch so mm. that consistent uh, is consistent uh, consistency is very very important in table tennis yeah. and of course there is a big uh, aspect in table tennis because table tennis is a complex sport because lots of spins you know yes. lots of spin involved there are back spin forward spin deviation spin there are 100 of spins you know the forward spin side spin so very it's very important for a player to understand the, the how those spins work you know better understanding of spins at each spins has different receive different angle it's yeah. 
to uh, give a return in a different angle. So you have to understand all the spins. So that is that is a very important aspect of table tennis. And uh, yeah, while playing game, I used to make my opponent run. Uh, opponent uh, make my opponent run around the table. And I used to change my uh, speed, speed, and direction of my strokes. Yeah. And of course, I, I play my always. I play my own strength. I try to make opponent to fall into my trap, which are my strength. You know, yeah. so that yes. Yeah. So that was your strategy, which all the people <laughs> now know. <laughs> But I'm much pro now for my tactical training. So yes, so I, I think I think to be very honest, I play better better now, which I used to play 20 years back. <laughs> that is that is with the rich experience that you have garnered over the years. Yes, yes. yes. Yeah. You you talked about all the different kind of spins and so many different aspects which uh, if you continue to do on a daily basis practice it out and just as you mentioned 100 top spins in a particular session. Mm. And but coming back to the types of spins and the types of receive. So if you are not actually working with a coach let's say mm -hmm. if you are just relying on online and you are just working with your friends mm -hmm. that could no. be a that could be a very big disadvantage for the yes. budding athlete absolutely. absolutely coaches parts are very very important yeah. very very important. so i was talking about uh, given the lack of coaches in non metro cities and uh, if a budding athlete wants to develop their game they finally derive for how to receive the this kind of spin and they will try to execute that in their game against against the friends so if there is some advice that you can give to these athletes who no no mm -hmm. uh, with uh, with with the video tutorial uh, yeah. learning table tennis i am not very very uh, optimistic about this yeah. thing i don't know about the other sports but in table tennis there are lots of spin Uh, um, involved and there are lots of equipment. So you know there 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 are five hundred uh, types of rubbers in the world now, five hundred, yeah. and yeah. there are three hundred types of sticky balls. So the margin is the difference is very uh, little, you know, very marginal. But the in table tennis, like point one mm also matter. So yes. all those things, unless you are playing um, with with your coach, you won't be able to understand. Of course. Yes. Yes. So clear cut. advice is that seek out for a coach even though it may be difficult but uh, if you're thinking of making it pro start from the onset and seek out for a good coach yes and to to starting beginners like, like in our academy also i have seen few kids they come and uh, their parents call and say ki ma'am they my son and my daughter is a very good tt player so first thing i ask them where they learn so they said ki uh, building mein niche they, they play yeah. so uh, so i know so we face lots of struggle to undo what they learned earlier you know ashish mm. yeah. i always prefer uh, beginners to join you know so that is much easier and if the, your stroke is not very professional if you are not playing the right kind of stroke from the beginning yeah so uh, it's very very uh, difficult you know yes. so always better to start with a proper coach yeah yeah it's very difficult to unlearn some unlearn. things yes. yeah yes definitely also one question uh, that many of the uh, budding athletes would be having is what kind of uh, tournaments that exist and if if you are starting out in your school level there would be your district states but if you can walk Uh, them through what kind of other uh, these tournaments are the major ones but apart from that are there other scouting opportunities that they can look into in the current times yes so uh, to start with when they will start playing tt of course they can participate for inter school tournament from chandanagar so we are we are into we have a in, in table tennis only we have chandanagar district otherwise it's a hugli district Yeah. But we have made our uh, Chandanagar town in a separate way. So now we have a Chandanagar district. So there would be few tournament inside your district. So you first you have to play the district tournament, and you have to you have to have your ranking in district to play mm -hmm. state level tournament. Yeah. So once you are like top eight or top ten in your district, so you should move to your state level tournament. So in like Maharashtra and Bengal and other state entity, I'm saying there there. 
there are six, seven state ranking tournament and there is one state championship. So that is the format, okay? So like if you are playing five state ranking tournament and one state championship, you have to play if you want to, if you want to have the ranking in the state, state level. So if you have three performance, they will count three best performance from a tournament and one state championship is the main tournament. So that way they will give you the state ranking. Once you secure the state ranking top eight, then you will have chances to participate for the national level tournaments. Then you can go for a national level tournament. And we have like uh, one national championship, which is the biggest. And then there is north zone, east zone, south yeah. zone. So all zone divided and there are six, four, five, six zonals. We call it zonal zona. Mm -hmm. so based on your zonal point and national national championship, you will get the national ranking. So that is the format. Yes, yes. And I think uh, they should also, the athletes should also look out for these tournaments because it's not like uh, it would be pushed into them. Like it's not very transparent some, no, sometimes. No, I'll tell you, uh, the, see, Dristic, when the non-metro cities, they will be knowing easily uh, about their Dristic ranking tournament. Mm -hmm. Especially during these days, there, there okay. won't be any hassles. Okay. I believe that. But when the state ranking tournament, so that is also very important. So they have to look for, uh, so each state, during our days, we don't used to have this website and all. Now there are all uh, association, all state association have their own website. Yes. So it's very, very easily uh, available. When the tournament, when the where is the tournament and which date and how to put your entry, everything is very, very well yeah. made in all the websites. So non-metro city player, they should have looked for their own state website they yes. have to follow that website that is very important so they will come to know all the specific information yes definitely they should always look out for the update on these websites yes yes going going into the balance between uh, you talked about uh, the few hours that you had to dedicate to table tennis but at the night time you had to dedicate for academics as well and mm -hmm. the importance of uh, the mental strategy or the mental acumen in the game of table tennis. So when, when you uh, are going into the professional circuit, how much of a balance you still need to maintain between the academics front and the table tennis in general, because somewhere or down the line, the academics front, the, the knowledge garnered from there can translate into you being a better table tennis athlete is is that from yes. something that you can relate yes. from your experience yeah. yes yes so i always believe academics is a very important for any sports person life you know it's very very important mm -hmm. in my case i'll tell you yes i got lots of facilities from my school yeah so that's the biggest advantage so till today also if somebody want to balance their academics between and sports so they have to get some support system from his or her school otherwise it's not possible mm -hmm. to be very honest but i was lucky enough i got a i got lots of advantages during that time mm -hmm. so i really managed my academic part also well uh, so what i used to do yes i used to plan my time well you know so every day i used to study two hours for sure yeah. and mainly i used to study then we started playing lots of tournaments so when i uh, it's very important uh, you have to adjust plan your time the plan your time means when you are traveling Suppose yeah. I am traveling to Kolkata to Delhi. So what I used to do, I used to study, you know, during that travel time, yeah. all of the time to study. So that is the best part. When you are traveling, you have to study. That yes. is my advice for all the sports, uh, you know, uh, kids. So, and it's very important to have your academic uh, well. Otherwise, yes. it's good very very difficult for your game also if you are academically good you know so you can uh, again it is an intelligent game right yes so you have to be smart you have to be uh, educated otherwise yes. it's difficult yes and then you have to be organized at the same time you have to be organized also and you have to be honest with yourself yes i have to do study and i have to excel in my sports also that that thing you, you should have it with right. you right know? right yes. and if if the coach can instill that the doing good in academics also means that it can translate yes. to doing good yes. in table, yes. it can further drive them. Right. And most importantly, as you also said that since TT is a growing sport mm -hmm. and uh, uh, when you are 
done with your like, let's say professional career doing a venture for example as you are doing uh, with p3 sports management mm -hmm. having having a better academic uh, acumen also helps into your career beyond table tennis of course of course like if you are not uh, excel in uh, as a player then any time if you are academically good you can go yeah. for sports management courses you know yes. so you can and you can have a degree and you you will of course you will get a good mm -hmm. job mm -hmm. because the sports industry is really booming in india so exactly. that aspect of, because you know some people they are academically good but they want to do sports they want to come back to sports similar way if, if you are a, already a sports person so you can go for a sports management course yeah. in that way. yeah it's a, it's a good segue to our next section which is like beyond the table tennis the professional table tennis circuit how do you create jobs around the table tennis for for example one athlete who may be aspiring for a professional circuit but we all know that it's a top 200 or the 300 who who can actually survive in the table tennis yes. arena so uh, some some of uh, of these sectors could be uh, being an international referee or international coach so you yourself have been accredited with those uh, uh, positions so can mm -hmm. you elaborate on what's the format or what's the structure into being accredited with an international coach and as well as an international referee yeah so this uh, yeah it's very important to have a certification from ITTA which is international table tennis federation you know so they have started this in initiative 6 years back to give the uh, level 1 level 2 and level 3 certification so but as of now uh, there are no uh, no big opportunity and no recognition from our uh, ITTA right table tennis federation of, of india like if you are uh, doing this course uh, so there is no guarantee you will get some job or yeah. something you know? yeah so there is no recognition to be very honest there is nothing but yes there is a major advantage when you do the this kind of a courses you will have your you will you will have lots of confidence within you you know once you finish we will understand the structural setup so we we are like all the time like we are not very uh, well structured mm -hmm. whatever we do like okay fine we have to run we have to uh, do uh, this much practice practice but there is no any structure proper structure so that you will understand from this kind of a coaching certification and then once you will be doing ittf uh, coaching level 3 so you will be understanding lots of tactical aspect of the game yes lots so that is a biggest advantage in my point of view and then uh, yeah of course the association don't give any recognition as of now but yes you will you have you can start your own academy and you can apply as a sports uh, coaches in the uh, schools or club definitely this kind of a certification will give you advantage you know yes and uh, Yes, and then of course, if if you are if if you are lucky enough, you can apply online to the other countries as an international coach. Since you have certification from ITTA, and then your name also uh, name also appear on the site website of mm -hmm. ITTA. So of course, you can apply for other countries which are not very very much uh, active, very uh, developed uh, in table tennis. So those countries. you can try your luck and few i know few coaches they also got the assignment in those countries after doing this certification so yes it's really important if you want to have any career um, as a coach as a table tennis coach and uh, for the referee for international umpire yes i have i have done my international umpiring uh, exam also Uh, so that is that is mandatory for having any kind of a assignment uh, in international uh, assignment like commonwealth games world championship asian championship unless you have this uh, white badge or blue badge you won't be able to this is a mandatory thing you have to have uh, give this international umpiring exam and you have to pass also so after this year, of course if you if you give and if you pass and uh, then you will get lot of assignment for national association Yeah. TTFI, uh, TTFI give lots of uh, assignment who who all are international umpire and they give they promote for uh, international tournament also like world championship Asian championship mm -hmm. and uh, I think this is a quite good remuneration uh, remuneration during those national and international uh, events you know yeah. so that's a very good thing yeah definitely these uh, adjoining sectors around table tennis it helps you to be a part of the table tennis fraternity. 
in general more and contribute to the table tennis sector mm -hmm. in general so ma'am you talked about um, the international refereeing aspect as well as the international coach aspect so if if somebody wants to go for these programs uh, which platform should they keep a track on whom do whom should they contact yes so for the international coaching certification there is a company called tenvik sports uh, they are the uh, main organizer uh, for this kind of uh, mm -hmm. level 1 level 2 level 3 coaching program so they have their again have their own uh, website and uh, uh, ttfi website also they they uh, publish so they, during this time of the year we are having mainly they have it in month of may to in uh, may june july every year the 10 weeks course will uh, is from bangalore so they they started this initiative along with the ttfi and for the uh, international umpiring thing uh, you will only find uh, on the ttfi website got it Because the state state association also they also have been informed before the any kind of uh, um, exam you know international umpiring exam so state association and the uh, uh, TTFI Got so it. they are the main two bodies uh, from where you can you will be uh, understand when the this uh, courses and this uh, exam will be held yeah and uh, to maintain these certifications on a yearly basis do you have to be a part uh, for example refereeing if do you have to referee in a certain number of matches to continue keeping that certification no for uh, for the coaching there is no such thing but for the referee yes once you are white badge then there is another level that is blue badge mm -hmm. once you are blue badge certificate uh, certification you will receive so to maintain that yeah. you have to do yes you have to go for uh, uh, four five international uh, assignment every okay. year okay. and then to uh, you can uh, activate you, you can maintain your uh, blue badge otherwise then mm -hmm. uh, again you have to appear for the exam you are not it. not active got it now moving to the next segment which is the the uh, your academy business the p3 mm -hmm. sports management which you founded and you are now the ce you are the ceo of the company mm -hmm. what prompted you to start this business line what uh, pain point did you see I, i'm sure uh there there would be a, a business uh, problem that you want to solve this so if for the viewers if you can elaborate on what prompted you to start this and what are some of the offerings that p3 sports management provides yeah ashish see um uh, i i i am a uh, thorough highly yeah. uh, sports is my passion you know see always i wanted to do something in sports so uh, i was actively participating in sports uh, till 1997 then i uh, i took a break uh, for my daughter and uh, for uh, for like 15 years then uh, yes again i started playing but that's a separate story all together but i, I thought uh, in 2014 i thought ki i have to do something in sports and uh, then i created this uh, p3 sports man management it's actually based out of mumbai and uh, of course this came uh, existing because of the passion for the sports in me and uh, to uh, give back something to sports actually you know so in that concept yes wow. so then we started uh, doing lots of corporate uh, events and in house corporate tournament with the big big companies and our main uh, with the expertise and industry connect p3 sports have been the most preferred sports management partner for many years with different companies also yeah. the uh, coaching academy for table tennis yeah. p3 sports is an ultimate initiative i believe for adding value to the grassroots level so yeah. we have already organized more than 50 uh, tournaments uh, for grassroots level players amateurs for the amateurs players and for inter school also we have conducted few events and yeah. uh, yes we are uh, Uh, we are working also with the uh, companies as well the yeah. corporates as well yeah. and but the main thing which um, right now which um, we are thinking uh, ki uh, we want to give a platform uh, to the 
to the people you know not only the grassroots kids so the, the project uh, we'll call is back to sports uh, see that yeah. is the main aim and it's aim like all the people who is around their mid uh, 30s uh, we 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 will train them and we'll get back to them to the sports and we'll encourage them to take part of the tournament that is our main uh, Uh, yes. project, project now back to sport so we want to give the platform to those like you know like uh, i played in my childhood days but because of my career because of my family i had to stop my sports uh, so i want to come back so how i'll come back so that entire thing will be taking care will give you the proper send the proper coaches will uh, connect you with the right equipment and will create a platform where you can come and play sports mm mm-hmm. so you're kind of uh, targeting like the two major one budding athletes for sure yes. the second yes. who want to go, come back and as you started playing again yes that's, correct that's perfect because, uh, because this uh, you know the corporate events and the for yes. for the veterans tournament like 30 plus 40 plus so we can if you come and see any tournament like 30 plus 40 plus category there are so many entries so many yes. people are coming and playing so everybody now mid 30s they are settled they have their own job they yeah. again want to start sports so that that uh, portion that field that part we want to cover now and yeah. we we'll call it back to sports you yeah. know yeah yeah so and with the grassroots development we are working on this back to sports project also definitely definitely and uh, uh, it may be a little out of scope but because uh, the mid 30s this target group when they come back to play table tennis is the suitable medium with, because you don't you have a small space you can if you have played in the past you can again start yes. playing it and and, and yeah. we have created few few uh, very innovative tournaments so we uh, we started uh, for the doctors you know so you know any point of their time they must have played table tennis because all the medical colleges they have to yes. table for sure yes. <laughs> so we created some table tennis uh, tournament for the doctors and there are very very uh, good responses from the doctors so yes. we we worked with walker also as a doctors tournament and not only table tennis actually we are looking for the all the other racket sports also we are promoting squash we are promoting yes. badminton we are promoting carrom so all we 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 do events with the, all the sports now initially yes we started only with table tennis yeah. but the events part now we do all racket sports yes and i think that also appeals to yeah. that target audience the 35 year olds they want to be involved in those kind of sports in indoor sports in general yes right talking uh, more on those uh, target group like the 35 year olds i know i'm moving a bit out of uh, the scope of uh, this show but uh, there is also like the veterans tournament that happens in table tennis yeah 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 there's lots of veterans yeah. now we have i'll tell you we have in india also there are five six veterans uh, national ranking tournament and we have the veterans national Yeah. and uh, international so i play international events yes. so i know there are so many if you go to itt uh, site you can see various number of uh, i think there are 20 25 uh, veterans tournament in all around the world and we have every two years we have our world uh, veterans world championship which i have played for the 16 in spain and this year also i supposed to go to france mm-hmm. month of june but because of this covid everything got postponed yeah. so uh, 2016 you won't believe there are 5000 participants from all around the world and there were 200 tt tables in that huge hall yeah something to really really to see and to experience uh, it's amazing but i have never seen that big table yes. tennis you know 500 participants from all around the world and 200 tt tables that's amazing yeah and that was in alicante spain so i played that event and i was in top 16 in the world <laughs> that's that's great congratulations thank you thank you and for a athlete who, who is again the 35 year old now if they want to aspire to reach that level again what's the structure for these kind of veteran tournaments yes yeah, so veterans again if you are like 35 you played in your childhood days yeah. again you want to come back and start yeah initially one two years you have to practice to be very honest and then once you are back to your flow then you can start playing a, a veterans tournament mm-hmm. you know so there are uh, many veterans to now we have a veterans association maharashtra 
uh, veteran association not only maharashtra all state have their veteran association along with the uh, no, uh, normal association uh, veterans association there are two association now every uh, okay state so uh, yeah you can check on there there are uh, six yeah. seven tournament you can you can play and you can have one veteran state championship again the structure is same yes. so uh, once you play all the tournament the best uh, they will calculate and they give you ranking so top four can participate for the national uh, you can participate from maharashtra or bengal or like uh, tamil nadu so that is the structure the same structure which you follow in the junior sub junior and yeah it's still under the aegis of ttfi but the veteran uh, no already it's 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 under uh, ttfi earlier the veterans association have not recognition from ttfi now the ttfi is part of this veteran national national association not only that whatever event i have played international i think i played more than uh, 20 international tournaments and every tournament i won medal yeah. uh, gold silver or bronze but i have not if you go to the ittf site you won't be seeing my name because till last year there are no uh, world ranking for the veterans oh. players okay. but luckily we are very happy but ittf has given recognition all the tournaments now they will they will give the world ranking so because of the covid now this year we yeah. are play but if we play now yeah. i'm winning so i will have accumulate I'll get some point and then i'll accumulate uh, the more uh, i will play the tournament so that way i'll get the world ranking also so that is a really really mm-hmm. it's a revolution you know otherwise yes we used to think yeah like we are going but there is no recognition we are yeah. not seeing our name as a world ranking but now at least we can see yes, so i'm top world ranking in your world ranking yeah. 50 now that's a big thing definitely whatever age it may be but whatever age it is but it's of course it it will give a lot of satisfaction yeah definitely i think it's a great aspiration for the people who will who want to play now at this yes, age absolutely. particularly 32 yes. 35 uh, because the other sports in general there is nothing as such i think table tennis is one of the few sports that no, would be having no 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 i think badminton badminton, badminton. is also very very mm-hmm. active in veterans event okay uh, squash also ashish the it's indoor not only table tennis it's, it's the, the like indoor squash. mostly the the indoor side indoor side and there is a one uh, i am actually part of uh, racketlon uh, association indian racketlon association so that's a, do you know about what is racketlon i think it everything around the uh, in racket sports one big association for that uh, yeah, i can explain how yeah. it works so for uh, racketlon of four sports so first you have to play uh, it's a smaller racket concept is smaller racket to bigger racket how like first you have to play table tennis 21 points okay second you have to play badminton 21 points third you have to play squash 21 oh. then again last course is tennis 21 okay. so total is 84 one match is 84 points suppose i am playing a racket one match so i have to play all four four sports oh. and you have to calculate all the points like i am very good in tt okay yeah. fine 21 2 yes. i am 19 point i am leading but i am bad <laughs> squash yeah. yeah so opponent can beat me again yes. so it's very very interesting you know and each and every point is important in this racket lawn yeah. and that is very big in europe and uh, we have world racket lawn association and they are europe it's really really doing good yeah. but in india yes we are trying to get this racket lawn concept in india as well. yeah definitely and uh, is it like a team event or a single yes, individual it's a team also it's yeah. a single also it's a doubles also so our racket lawn team last last year uh, ashutosh pednekar he is the world champion world champion yeah you know he is very good and so he won uh, the world uh, championship yeah from uh, india got it got it that's that's great to know that uh, such kind of opportunities are do exist for anyone who wants to start to play again yes and those are all the uh, like 40 plus 50 plus 60 plus these yeah. are the events in badminton yes. and in fact in table tennis world championship you see you can see 80 plus 90 plus event also can mm-hmm. you believe this 80 plus 90 plus category also yes that's that's amazing that's amazing yeah. for people who are in that age category and want to be active Yes, correct. none better better medium. Uh, who, who jogging is fine, but table tennis and other sports are better. Yes, table tennis, golf is also better. Yes. 
<laughs> coming coming to the last uh, segment uh, and talking about like the few future of uh, table tennis that you see so according to you what does india need to do to create more awareness and eventually more professional participation for the players i think uh, yeah sports as awareness is very important you know uh, but yeah after 2008 uh, we won uh, olympic medals in uh, uh, from india so the all the concept of the sports industry has changed from 2008 i believe and in table tennis also definitely there are the players the harmit desai and then uh, satyan ganeshan sharad kamal malika manika vatra so they are really really playing well and we got uh, we uh, won a commonwealth gold yeah. also in table tennis so the scenario has been of course changed and ttfi is also supporting and there are lots of uh, lots of opportunities the players are getting and uh, the utt uh, also uh, started a uh, Uh, league, yes. uh, international league, which is uh, the with the vision of winning uh, an Olympic medal for the India in table yes. tennis by two two four. The UTT started uh, this uh, league on two two thousand seventeen by eleven sports. You know mm-hmm. that is a great initiative, yeah. and this is really inspire the youth and drive the de- development of the grassroots level. So how the grassroots level? The league is not for the grassroots level. League yeah. league league is in a very professional manner, but. Suddenly, you know, when uh, you have icons, suddenly you have icons, Sarath Kamal, Shatya, and Manika Batra, Madhulika Patkar. Suddenly, th- when the kids are seeing, so they are playing for with the international players, you know, and they they can watch them in India, and uh, they are playing with the foreign players, and and they are beating those foreign foreign players. So that that is really really increased um, the uh, grassroots uh, level a lot because lots of kids uh, can motivate it. Yeah. after seeing this you know so that is a there are lots of kids now want to play table tennis because of this utt i believe that definitely it it also uh, gives like the for, for the from the parents point of view if they see something on the tv that yes. the players yes. are playing at an international mainly this this yeah. this league has covered by uh, star sports hot star yes. which we never never thought we can <laughs> only see cricket you know yeah. uh, we, And suddenly, table tennis is coming hot for and star sport. That is something very, very attractive and very, yeah. very inspiring. And then Amir Khan is giving some, uh, you know, advertisement coming playing ping pong. So those really, really affected a lot in grassroots level. That yes, way. yes, definitely. And uh, just to to wrap things up for the for this. Uh, uh show for this uh, one hour discussion it has been a great discussion but if you have to give one piece of advice to the budding athletes who mm-hmm. are from the non metro cities and who would be watching this show what would be that one piece of advice yeah so my advice would be uh, you should aim for uh, win medal for the country and it should not be that i want to play for a school or for a college or for a state and i want to have a job but always aim big that i will win a medal for commonwealth for asian games for uh, i will participate olympic and i will get a olympic medal and uh, yes aim big and work on it yes. perfect aim big and everything will fall in place yes perfect thank you mrs munmun uh, it was thank you so much ashish great, for inviting great conversation me. same here thank you thank Bye-bye. you well that was a very informative podcast and here are my three important takeaways from the session Firstly, if you are a budding athlete and you don't have a coach, then you definitely must seek out a coach. And if that means traveling to a metro city for those opportunities, please do so because just online training won't help you. Secondly, if you are an adult and you have uh, never played or only played table tennis to a limited extent, it's never too late to start playing table tennis for you. Just pick up a racket and start participating. This will definitely give you a fitness boost. And lastly, if you are an amateur or semi-pro athlete, you can look at getting coaching and uh, referring certifications to improve your remuneration from table tennis. I would like to close this podcast with a famous quote from the table tennis world, which is, "Happiness is sometimes no words, just the sound of the table tennis ball." Thank you everyone for listening in today. I'll see you in the next episode. Thank you.